So how can um, adding new senses to the human body help us to rediscover the planet where we live in? So right here and right now, my body is connected to online seismographs that allow me to perceive the seismic activity of the planet. So for the last two, two years, I've been perceiving earthquakes via vibrations into my arm. So now I'm here in Munich, but if there's an earthquake in California, my arm will be braid. And if there's an earthquake in China, my body will be braid. Depending on the scale of the earthquake, the vibration is bigger or smaller. So at the beginning, I had to get used to all this new input, but after months, I got used to receiving all these vibrations every day until it became a sense. So after years of research, I can now say that I have found uh, my extra sense, and I call it the seismic sense. Movement is inevitable, unstoppable, and in most cases, invisible. There's something magical about perceiving the invisible movement. Imagine if all of us could perceive invisible movements, or what we have behind, or what is happening in the other side of the planet. Moving is one of the things we do permanently. The first thing you ever did, and probably the last thing you'll ever do. Even what we think is still, is not still. Like, if we look at this stage closer with a microscope, we will see that there's lots of activity. And this building itself is, is constantly moving because the world is constantly rotating around the sun and itself and across the space. There's something extraordinary about movement because there's no practical antonym of movement. There's no such thing as stillness. Everything moves. There are some movements that we can perceive them because they're, we cannot feel them or see them. Some of them we cannot perceive them because they are too small or too slow. And some of them because they are too large or too fast. So I became really interested in movement. I've always been really interested in movement, so I went to study dance. And as a dance student, I was encouraged to use technology on my dance pieces. But there was always something that, that I disliked about that. Always that, always that I, I had to use... No, the, always that I saw a performance that used technology in, on, on their pieces. I, I always felt that the technology in the dance pieces diminished the power of the performance present. Always that I went to see a, a dance piece that used technology, it felt cold, distant and unnatural. So I wanted to find a way to use technology in my dance pieces in a less aggressive way. So then I thought that instead of using technology into the dance piece, technology should, should be used and into the dancer. So technology should be part of the dancer's mind instead of the, of the dance piece. So I thought that I would incorporate technology into my body in order to extend my senses. And then from these new senses, I would express myself to dance piece. But I didn't know what sense I wanted to extend. I didn't know how to extend my perception of movement. And after a while, and then it came to my mind that I could um, I could perceive a speed. So that's what I did. I created an wear and a an speed detector into my arm that allowed me to perceive the exact speed of any moving object of, of people. So at would point, I would sit somewhere and I would point of people, and then I would feel if people were walking three per hour or five per hour through vibrations. So after wearing, and, uh, after wearing it for a while, I was able to, to detect different speeds into my arm. But um, wearing technology wasn't comfortable enough. I didn't want to wear a sense. I wanted to have a sense. That's why I collaborated with my friend Marcos Rodriguez, and we created a pair of earrings that transformed my body into a speed radar. So if someone was walking from right to left, I would feel a vibration into my right ear and then into my left ear. So I could know the speed of the people walking depending on the interval of each vibration. So I learned speed um, by, by, by the intervals of the vibration. So after noticing these constant speeds, I realized that we all, uh, that context, change, um, <laughs> context modifies our walking speed. So we all modify the way we walk depending with who we are with or where we are. So I started the project 
uh, around Europe. Uh, I wanted to define each capital of, of city of, the, of Europe by its average speed. So uh, I would stand in each city, in different spots of the city for several days un until I found the average speed of the people walking, of the citizens walking. I went, uh, I traveled around 30 capitals, they take this, and for example, this is the speed of London. This is the speed of Berlin. This is the speed of Lisbon. And this, oh, I got dizzy now. This is the speed of the Vatican City. <laughs> because no one walks past. This is basically a, a, a line. If someone would run in the Vatican City, something terrible must happen there. So, um, I also created the dictionary movement of, of defining the, each capital city. So now I can ask dancers to move like Estocolm movement or Paris movement, and the quality of movement can change a lot. So after detecting the speed of the other people, I was interested in to know my own speed. So I used the machine to teach myself my, my, my own walking speed. And after learning that, I thought that I could use this new skill to avoid red traffic lights. Because if I, if I knew my own speed, like to arrive in time on the green light always, I would never have to stop. So I wanted to put this in practice, and I chose the Rambla de Catalunya in Barcelona that has eight traffic lights. So I calculated the distance between each traffic light and the timing of the green light, so I would know what speed to walk. And, and it worked. I went from one, to one end of the street to the other one non-stop, just by modifying my own speed. So imagine if we, all, we could apply this to a whole city, and imagine a world where green lights were always on. We just, would, we just need to know our own speed and be geolocated. So after wearing, perceiving all this, this speed, one day I decided to turn uh, my earrings around and to experience, to wake up my, my back and to experience the presence that I have behind. And this opened up a whole new world of my surroundings, a whole perception of the reality. It, I experienced the absence of behind. So, so by turning the earrings around, I could perceive if someone was moving behind me, or if someone was getting closer or further away from me. So imagine if we, go, we could all perceive what we have behind, probably our lifestyle would change. For example, we would avoid this uncomfortable situation when you try to walk fast and someone is blocking you in the street when you try to pass them over. And probably sports will change, like new rules will have to be applied and maybe new sports will be created. And also in dance would change because most of the choreographies are based in the frontal vision of the dancer, so if they had like a knowledge of the behind, probably they would look very different than this piece. So after perceiving what I had next to me, what I have behind me, I wonder about how it would be to perceive more an, an, an universal movement, a movement that would go behind my natural senses, a movement that didn't depend of people or moving objects. And then it's when I came it's when I thought about the natural movement of the Earth through earthquakes. So earthquakes is like the heartbeat of the planet. The planet, it shakes every day through earthquakes, but we cannot feel all of them. So I thought it would be amazing to be, to be able to perceive this universal movement, like to, to perceive a movement as profound as earthquake. I thought it would be amazing to transform this universal movement to a human body. So it's when I created the Seismic Sense, and I, now I create dance pieces with this. One of my pieces is called Waiting for Earthquakes, where I'll stand on the stage and I wait for an earthquake to take place. And when this happens, I dance, and my, the intensity of my, of my movement depends on the intensity of the earthquake. So, if during the performance there's no earthquakes, there will be no dance. <coughs> yeah, I wanted to give this talk, like, also depending on the earthquakes, but I think 
the dead people didn't really like, so <laughs> I just I just pick ignoring the earthquakes now. So after these external vibrations, after perceiving this universal movement, and after this motion became an emotion, it's when I felt cyborg. It's when I felt that the union between my body and cybernetics had united. So it's also when I started to encourage other people to look for their, for their own sense and to search and to experiment with the extending their, search, their, their senses and their perception of reality. So that's why in 2010 I founded the Cyber Foundation with Neil Harbison. It's an international organization with three aims. One is to help humans to become a cyborgs. The other one is to defend the cyborg rights. And the other one is to promote cyborgism as an art and social movement. Cyborgism is an art movement where artists can express themselves through a new sense created by the union between or an organism and cybernetics. So I think the union between humans and technology is like movement. It's inevitable, unstoppable, and in most cases, invisible. Be invisible, because most of the people already have an invisible connection with technology. We even say, I'm running out of battery, rather than say, my phone is running out of battery. So now that I, that I am, now that I'm a cyborg, now that my organism and my cybernetics have united, with an extra sense, I don't feel closer to robots or machines. I feel closer to nature because I can feel my planet. And I, can and I feel closer to other animals that can perceive earthquakes too. So I strongly believe that we can learn a lot from other animals, that we can get inspired from them. Because if we look closer to their senses, we will see that what we think is very unnatural is actually very natural because some animals can fly, some animals can perceive the infrared and ultraviolet, some animals can create light in the dark, and even immortality already exists in nature because there are jellyfish that never die. So, adding new senses to the, to the body can help us to rediscover the planet where we live in. And people from the 20th century predicted that the union between humans and technology would be dangerous and natural and that we disconnect us from our planet, but it doesn't need to be this way. We are the ones that need to make sure that the union between humans and technology doesn't alienate us from nature, instead of bring us, bring us closer to the planet, to the nature, and to other animal species. Thank you.